Hey, this is Mild Minds, and I'm going to run you through my future music, music radar sample challenge. Um, I opted for something a little different than I would usually do, mainly due to the limitations of samples. I'd be lying if I didn't admit I was horrified when I heard them. <laughs> um, I'm not used to really over-processing things. I like to just found, find a sound that works. But with this, it was actually a nice challenge to um, turn something I didn't necessarily like into something I did. Uh, I kind of went for a pretty, I guess you'd say, like deep house, house influence on this track. Um, I added my own vocals mainly just to give it a bit more atmosphere um, as we were limited with vocal options. And I used a vocal hook from the pack. Um, so these are the samples I used. You give me everything I need. Obviously a very risky one there. Um, I used this bass sound, filtered down and used it for bass notes. I used this drum break essentially for um, percussion and hi-hats and a few things. A lot of filt uh, a lot of processing on that. Um, uh, what's this? The 909 clap worked perfectly fine. Grill pan for a bit of a effect. A go-go was used a little bit. And I use that as a hi-hat, I'll show you how. And this zap sound. Which um, I pitched down. I'll show you the song and then we'll go over everything. So 
first I'm going to show you how I made the drums. Um, had a pretty, in my opinion, average um, drum break to use. Uh, I resampled that kick drum and I uh, EQ'd it like so. Then I use the Ableton drum bus, um, as you can see here, um, to add boom, which is essentially sub. It's a really useful tool to have a um, clean sub on a kick without you know layering up too many kicks. Um, so I actually use that to create the bass, sub bass, um, kind of tom sound later. I'll show you that. I just filtered the highs off. I wanted a very kind of dirty low kick for this. Added that in. It's a repitch version. Um, just to give it a bit more thud. Um, and then the 909 clap you heard earlier. Um, pitch down, pretty sure. Oh no, it seems to be normal. Nice kind of deep drum machine clap anyway. The go goes just on the off here. Nothing too special there. Um, and the shaker, which is really what I turned into a hi-hat, um, was originally this cabasa. Um, very long and lots of treble. Um, and I shortened that. Gave it some overdrive, quite a bit, and it gave it that nice kind of harsh lo-fi hat sound. Um, onto the bass, I took that kick I made earlier with the boom, um, and I resampled it. that we had to get it in key so I worked out um, where C was using an EQ probably um, if you look at the Ableton EQ here you can use that as a good good measure um, you widen it like this you see where the fundamental for the kick is say here and you look down in this corner where it will tell you kind of what note it is so that's either, yeah, probably about C or B. Um, and so from there I was able to create the bass line. And the sub bass was that synth ping note from the pack. Um, really filtered down, so you only get the subs there. Which obviously you don't want that fifth in there or seventh or whatever it is on top. Um, the grill pan has an effect in the drums. Um, and my favorite thing from this session was really re reworking that uh, drum break um, into something a bit more usable. And I really filtered that down quite a bit, removed the uh, width. Um, and then fab filter satin, which is really great for saturation and drive. Um, just to give it a bit more squash. And that's side chained with the kick as the input. So yeah, that this is probably a sound I would use um, along with what I've got going for the drums, I would probably use all that stuff in a, a track. Bit more of a loop there. I think I actually swung this loop. Yeah. So if you look in the corner here, I open the groove pool uh, and basically, where is it? Do this. Um, yeah, and I used 
the Ableton Swing 1655, which fairly straightforward, um, heavy swing on the drums to give it that more garagey um, influence. Otherwise, it sounds a little more like this. So this is with the swing. This is without. Just kind of straighter and not groovy. And the only loop, only uh, soft synth or software I used, um, which are allowed to use one piece, was this um, Omnisphere Kalimba. Omnisphere is a great plugin. Um, has a lot of organic sounds, um, world instruments, normal synth sounds, bass sounds, um, but uh, mainly just a lot of stuff to find textures and experiment with. Um, you know, I try. I didn't want this to be too much of a kind of kalimba tropical house vibe. I just wanted to use it instead of a normal keys pad. Um, obviously, I just lost the plot about halfway through the song and went full piano house, but, you know, shit happens. <laughs> um, yeah, not much processing on that, just a bit of EQ. I've had to freeze that because... Uh, was having trouble running everything while recording um so then the scary vocal house vocal i say scary because it's a high risk move um i i think i made the whole song around pitching this down so i pitched this down four to about where it felt cooler um, and then I built the song around that key. Um, I've also auto-tuned it um, to create a bit, to ensure that it's a little bit more perfect. Um, I then also edit, if you click this little button down the left here, you can get clip transposition and alter the pitch of certain notes in a clip, which is a great trick. Um, obviously, there's a bit of artifacts Um so you wouldn't really want to do it too much on a strong lead vocal, but in a sampley kind of thing like this, it works. Um, yeah, so that's a great trick to repitch things if you if you know it comes kind of pre-made. Um, I then added Nectar, which is a great vocal tool. Um, you can add mainly here this harmony. So you add. Um, unison plus 12 plus 7 plus 5 whatever fits the song um, and then you can set its position in the mix and up and down its volume so that was a cool effect to kind of add the higher higher notes to it as opposed to this super clean version um, still sounds better than the original pitch um, and then I just played around with just using effects to make it a little bit cooler so I used um, Valhalla Room and I just drop that in every now and then to give it a very strange space from a kind of cleaner tone to that while it's also auto panning here kind of make giving it more texture than it you it could have um which yeah just kind of makes it a bit more lo-fi a bit more cool um a bit more original and i did the same thing with echo boy uh sound tools plugin as you can see here it's a great delay tool i put it on this i, I chained it so that i could just control the wet up and down so if you look at the automation here <laughs> Just playing around with it to. Oh, I, I think I also played around with the feedback um, so that, yeah, the tail rode out a little longer in spots like that. Um, Use it for building, building up. And the other interesting thing I did with this vocal was I gated it. You use uh, basically a sine tone or kick drum or whatever you want as this, the input for the gate over here. Uh, where is it? Here. So the gate comes on. 
and uh, you set the threshold to a certain amount that kind of uh, basically reverse side chains it. So whenever it sees and hears this tone down here, it will uh, bring the sound in. <laughs> And you just have that channel off. So it's really good for creating kind of early 2000s gated uh, trancy house effects. And I got a lot of reverb on that vocal, so that also kind of cuts in and out in a interesting textural way. Um, so here's the laser from earlier I used micro shift on that to get it out of the way of everything um, another great sound toys plugin kind of a very minimal chorus effect in a sense um, that can detune um, change the sample delay between each left and right and spread a mono sound um, it doesn't sound amazing when it's in mono but you know, just use it on on textural things and well, things that aren't key to the mix or backing vocals, things like that. Um, and I think somewhere I was repitching it. Hang on. Hmm. Oh yeah, here. Yeah. So I just use the tramp transpose here and automated that. Um, we'll actually set it to a macro over here. And I was actually using, rather than programming every single dot in, I just hold the note and use the arpeggiator, since there's only one note, straight or chord trigger, it's gonna just re-trigger it. So that's another cool effect you can do, say on a pad, um, to create a stabby sequence kind of sound. I mean, just by simply holding a note. And you can change the gate a bit, but... So yeah, try that on different sounds, I would suggest. Delay effects. Uh, yeah, so what I got here was I bounced, pretty sure it's the laser. Yeah, I got Echo Boy on the laser with some long feedback. Um, I let it record out, I recorded it in here. It was actually from the vocal, it was from the vocal sample. And then I just looped that delay to create a nice texture for the, from the start of the song. Otherwise, it's pretty empty. to the kalimba, he might, um, yeah, um, pretty straightforward chords here, but uh, melancholy is kind of the, the vibe I always enjoy going for, everything's a little bit off to, to give it more of a live feel, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, the channel's frozen right now, but you can hear that here. <laughs> And then I had to bounce down the bass note separate. Um, and the plan with this change here was to just kind of lift the song into a different feel. More contemplative, less uh, moody. Um, Then I added my vocals, which, you know, I was thinking of working around this ridiculous uh, lyric. You give me everything you need. Um, I didn't want to put too much work in, but um, yeah. So lyrically, it's not too much, but it it adds the atmosphere to the song. What I use to process that is actually 
when I'm recording in, I use the, the console from the UAD. So I run this, um, the 1176 kind of limiter. Um, and that saves you a lot of work later and having a lot of plugins. I mean, to me, it makes the hugest difference um, when recording demos and things. And then I just uh, use this Neve, which kind of cooks it a little bit. Um, you don't want to go too far, but it, yeah, it kind of um, saturates it mildly. And then this EQ is a really smooth EQ. I think bo both the last two plugins come free with a UAD sound card. Um, so yeah, this adds a brightness um, with a very soft attenuation or focused if you want. Um, you're choosing the frequency down here. So sometimes I'll record with that just because I know it's going to sound smooth much better than, say, just Ableton EQ um, dropping some highs in. Um, so that makes everything sound nice from the get-go. And I always use another a bit of Echo Boy um, on my vocal. Just very standard. You take the highs down, you take the lows up. Um, here, have a listen. Don't go, I'll set you free. Don't go, I'll set you free. And, well, with the reverb as well, I always use, um, there it is, the UAD AMS. Keeps loading the other window. Um, so, yeah, beautiful dark reverb. There's a lot of cool stuff on this. I actually didn't realize how good it was until I watched a video on it about two or three years into having it. Um, yeah, you can do a lot of stuff with it. A lot of interesting things. The reverse one is pretty cool as well to create some reverse effects. Uh, so here it is without the reverb or delay. Don't go, I'll set you free. Don't go, I'll set you free. With the delay. Don't go, I'll set you free. Then I like to compress it so that it pulls it all together. Um, often a lot of people won't really won't do that after the effects, but it, it's actually quite useful. Um, makes it feel like more of a track, you know, like it's being put to tape as a as a whole thing. Um, cool. So it looks like that's about it. So here you can hear just the drums and the bass. And it looks like I haven't even really put anything on the group. I just have a T-Rex compressor, which to me is a really nice um, soft compressor. Look, it's going pretty crazy right now, but um, it doesn't, it's not too audible, you know, if you were doing a pretty hard compression with something else, you'd really hear it. This really, to me, gels everything together. Um, you shouldn't usually compress something that heavy, but on a master, but I, I like to do it depending on the song. Um, if it's not too busy, it really allows the kick and everything to move together. And everything to move out the way of the kick. And then I just use the LA, uh, L2 Ultra Maximizer as a limiter um, just to pull a bit of everything that's jumping out down. Um, so I pretty much always start with these two and then maybe in the future I change it up. But I, I, I don't mind mixing into something um, that sounds semi-professional <laughs> um, from the get-go. Just be careful not to take it too far. Cool. Um, hope you've enjoyed listening and hit me up if you have any questions.